So great to see everybody. Um, thanks for coming out on this incredible, wonderful day. Um, we're, a bit, we're, of course, sandwiched in between yesterday's crazy 50 degrees. Uh, and then tomorrow's, we're, I, there's going to be a couple of us on powder tomorrow. I don't know who that's going to be. Um, but uh, so it, thank you very much for all coming out to the Leahy Center for Lake Champlain. It's great to see you all here today. My name is Phelan Fretz, and I have the great honor of being the executive director of this institution. Um, and uh, was, as, as some of you might know, I'm, I'm going to be retiring in the next couple of months um, after 20 years of uh, service to this organization. So it's, it, to me, it's been a, a great run. Um, and so many of you in this room, I've had the opportunity to work with you, um, to interact with you, for you to be support and part of the network that has made the Leahy Center so very, very successful. So without all that, we, we could not do the work here. Um, I, I'm not going to apologize because I love days like this at the Leahy Center. Um, we've got 1,000 people in the building today. We are doing Lake Education. As you know, education can be noisy. Uh, it can be kind of fun. That's The more noise sometimes, the better. Um, and so um, I, behind us, we could hear some growls from certain maybe small children or dinosaurs. Um, and then there's apparently a, there's a major presentation um, and in some partnership with actually Global Foundries today um, across the hall. So all that's happening in the middle of all this. And, but we're also just pleased that all of you could come here and, and join us in the enthusiasm for this great lake work and water quality work today. So um, I, I'm, I'm just going to kick it off here. Um, but I um, want to first of all say a warm welcome to the Senator and Marcel to the Leahy Center. Thank you so much for coming here. And we're so pleased that your team reached out to us and we get a chance to host this, uh, this, this great day today. But I also want to welcome uh, the UPA, EPA um, Deputy Administrator, Janet McCabe. Thank you for coming all the way up from that place called Washington. Um, and join us today. EPA Administrator um, for Region 1, David Cash, thank you for coming. The U.S. Um, the Vermont Deputy Commissioner on Environmental Protection, Kim, Kim Greenwood, thank you for being here. And then Mayor Burlington, Moreau Weinberger, thank you, Moreau, for being here. Um, with that, I'm going to step out. Um, I think, so Senator, you're up first? I think so. Okay. Senator Patrick Leahy. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Phil and Nitro. When we mentioned, and I was mentioning to the uh, uh, deputy administrator, and I do appreciate you being here, and David being here, and everybody else, uh, and of course Kim, who has to pick up after us here in Vermont when <laughs> we leave, and the mayor. But uh, I was saying to the deputy administrators, we walked around. I think of how this center, which we jokingly, well, fondly call the Marcel Leahy Center at home, uh, how it's evolved. But Phelan Pretz deserves, uh, it's, I can't even begin to talk about how much credit he deserves. I've, uh, every time I come in here and he says, hey, you know, Patrick, we got this or that, we're, going to, we're planning this. I said, how the heck do you do that? He said, well, we're going to, and he tells me, and I'm like, that's impossible. And then he does it. And so go out there and just count the young people. And that's what we aim for. These are the kids that are going to carry on. They're the ones who are going to protect the lake. They're going to protect our environment. And they're going to learn here. And, of course, Marcel and I, uh, do get a kick out of walking by the wreck in there because one, the we're both scuba divers, but mostly in salt water. And one of our first uh, clear water diving was out here and diving on on that wreck. But um, it's not warm. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I it was the middle of the summer. And I've never been that cold in the summertime. And I was born in Vermont, so we both were. Uh, but, you know, Phelan, I, I don't want to embarrass you, but we all owe you a great deal of credit. And if you knew the number 
of times, people going through my office in Washington will talk about going through here and what they learn. And it's always something different. And, and that's great. And so um, we're doing this throughout Vermont. We've gone through a pandemic that was a lot longer than anybody could have anticipated. It has created enormous uh, problems in, in business, in education, obviously medical care and in families. And I, hopefully we're now coming out the other side. And we could all take an example from what you've done here as a, as a way to do it. And now I think one of the most important legislative vehicles helping us move the country forward is the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act. It had an unnecessary delay for a while, came passed, but once it got passed, it is well worthwhile. It's, we'd had decades of inaction. Many of us had fought for this before, but we got a bipartisan, bipartisan, which is not the easiest thing to do these days in Washington, $1. trillion infrastructure bill. We passed it. We enacted it in November. The president signed it, and it's going to help bring our country's aging infrastructure into the 21st century. Think of some of the things it's going to do to long neglected communities, not only in Vermont, but throughout the country. We build our roads, our bridges, our railways, expand broadband. And as you know, Marcel and I live on a dirt road in Middlesex. Be glad to have some more broadband. But then we'll build out our renewable energy grids, which is so important. And some of the uh, most substantial and important investments will be to restore environmental quality, clean water, safe drinking water to every American. It shouldn't be safe drinking water only depending upon where you live. It should be to everybody. And the EPA has worked so hard on that. And then I must admit there is something very close to my heart. The infrastructure bill includes $40 million for our great Lake Champlain means the Lake Champlain program will have stable funding of at least $8 million each year for the next five years. In addition, and that'll be in addition to other money I'll get in the annual appropriations bills. When uh, the bills are finally enacted, and I'll be meeting with the appropriations staff later this evening in Washington, uh, I hope we're going to see an all-time high annual appropriation of $20 million for this program. And I'll make Lake Champlain program my highest priority in the fiscal year 2023, next year's budget, which will be my last one as chairman of the Senate Appropriations Committee. But I think getting a five-year level funding at, at the very least is great for us at this time because the Lake Champlain program led by the EPA in the states of both Vermont and New York, can now undertake more and bigger restoration projects than ever before. And actually, the $40 million is only a small part of the investment when you think of the other things. Municipal drinking water, Mr. Mayor, wastewater, stormwater improvements, things that you have to worry about every single day, but it'll be an increase of more than four times, four times the current funding levels. And not since the 1970s has so much been done uh, to help our towns and cities. And <clears throat> we are honored. The USPA Deputy Administrator, Janet McCabe, has come up here. It's always beautiful like this. Uh, <laughs> Don't try to fly out tomorrow. And, <laughs> but she's come to Vermont, the shores of Lake Champlain, to explain what these investments mean for our country and our region. So, uh, Administrator Janet, would you please join us? Thank you all. Well, I am a 
I'll confess to you guys right now, although I spent many years of my life in Boston, I'm a flatlander. I live in the Midwest. Mm -hmm. So it is an especial treat for me to look out there and, and see something that's ab above sea level. Um, it's really wonderful. Um, Senator Leahy, um, what, a, what an honor and pleasure it is for me to be here today with you and, and meet you. It's just a, a personal honor, honestly. Um, you have done so much for this lake, uh, for this state, and uh, for the nation. Um, and as somebody who's not a Vermonter, I've known Senator, about Senator Leahy my whole life. So I'm, I'm very grateful. Um, what a thrill to be here at this incredible um, facility. Um, and I'm going to repeat some of the things that you heard Senator Leahy talk about because that's why we're here today is to talk about uh, what, what is happening in this country with the bipartisan infrastructure law um, and the work that EPA working with mayor, with the state, um, are going to be able to do for the, um, the people, the families, the kids who live in Vermont and uh, live around this incredible, iconic resource. Um, the Science Center is a, what a treasure it is for this community. Um, I, I know how important the comparable facilities are in, in Indianapolis where I live for thousands and thousands of children who are going to grow up to have our jobs someday, your job someday, um, and we need them to learn about the sturgeon and climate change and uh, dissolved oxygen and all of those things and they can learn about that and have fun here and with, with their friends. Um, so thank you, Phelan. It's uh, lovely to meet you, and congratulations on 20 amazing years. And I do not envy whoever takes this job after you. Um, I understand that uh, Lake Champlain is home to more than 80 species of fish. Um, it's a beautiful and cherished place for the 600,000 people who live around it, and uh, many, many, many of those people depend on it for their drinking water. Um, it is a, a, a national resource. Um, I, I come from near those other Great Lakes, Senator, um, and I know how deeply felt, how deeply people feel about these resources that are in their communities. Um, big bodies of water um, or rivers or, or bogs, um, they, they get inside people. Um, they, I, they identify with them. Um, they remember going fishing there or swimming there with their grandpa and their grandma and their cousins, and um, it means the world to them. And, and we're so lucky because that means that they care and they will support programs like this and advocate for programs like, um, like um, uh, Senator Leahy has been responsible for bringing to the country to, to protect and preserve. So I would say that, that resources like Lake Champlain are the reason that many of us got involved in the jobs that we're in today. Um, we are this year celebrating the 50th anniversary of the Clean Water Act. So that is the, the, the major piece of legislation that we have in this country, along with the Clean Air Act and, uh, and uh, CERCLA and, and so many of those acts that were passed in the 1970s and the 1980s that um, have led the country to, to, to be able to be as focused on environmental protection as we are. Um, 50 years of the Clean Water Act is, is remarkable and we will continue to support and use the Clean Water Act to preserve uh, Lake Champlain and, and, and the drinking water that, uh, that lies under um, uh, this entire country and provides drinking water for so many people. Um, it's great to be here with the mayor and the Deputy, Deputy Commissioner uh, Greenwood. Um, local leaders are where environmental protection happens. Congress can, can, can um, uh, appropriate the money, EPA can write regulations and provide that support, uh, but we will never, ever know communities as well as the local leaders know them. And it is um, uh, uh, EPA's major job to partner with local communities, uh, with, with city governments, with counties, and with state uh, partners in order to implement those important environmental laws and get that money out into the community where it's actually going to make a difference. And I'm sure uh, more, than, more than any of us uh, down in Washington, you are seeing the impacts of climate change around Lake Champlain and in Vermont every day. Um, and we were talking about how, how much snow there would usually be uh, this time of year or how much more frozen the lake would usually be. Um, we, the climate change is happening in this country, in the world, and um, it's affecting us now. President Biden knows that. 
That's why he has made climate change one of the most important um, uh, uh, princi underlying principles of, of the way he wants to govern and how he wants this country to be at the end of his administration. Um, and at the cornerstone of that is transforming our water infrastructure. Um, there is no better way to build a better, better America than to deal with the crumbling infrastructure that, um, that, that is in every community across the country in terms of drinking water and wastewater. And the bipartisan infrastructure law that the senator mentioned and was instrumental in getting passed is the largest single investment in water that the federal government has ever made. EPA has $50 billion that will go out to states across the country to make a difference in everybody's community, as the senator said. It should not matter how much money is in your pocket or your zip code or the color of your skin. You should have clean drinking water. You should not have sewage backing up in your yard, and many, many Americans do um, on a regular basis. As part of the infrastructure law, also as the senator mentioned, $40 million of investment will come to the Lake Champlain program. Uh, we have uh, a number of uh, just, just exquisite treasured um, uh, ecosystems around the country um, that are getting some attention through this bipartisan law, and Lake Champlain is one. So that is just, just so, so important. Um, so much work to do, and I know that there are challenges that you face here, toxic algal blooms um, from excess nutrients running off into the lake, this $40 million and uh, additional investments will help the Lake Champlain program deal with those kinds of ongoing um, issues. It will also help with infrastructure projects around the state of Vermont uh, to help with, with water discharges and with drinking water. Um, the, the last thing I just want to mention before I turn this over to my colleague is to, um, is to emphasize that, again, through President Biden's um, emphasis, EPA is looking at all of our programs through the lens of equity and environmental justice. Um, we know, we know that people around this country do not share the burdens of pollution and environmental degradation equally. It does matter, actually what your zip code is or the color of your skin, to whether you have clean water to drink, clean air to breathe, and clean land to play on. And President Biden is committed to making sure that the benefits of, uh, of these programs are go to those underserved communities so that we can address those um, decades-old injustices around the country. Um, and I think that's, that's, that's what we all want to see. That is um, a win for our country, um, a win for the future, um, a win for all those little kids out there, um, and we're just so grateful to be part of it. So now I'm really thrilled to uh, turn the podium over to my colleague, David Cash, who is the uh, EPA Regional Administrator in Region 1. He's our newest Regional Administrator. We're thrilled uh, to have him on the job and uh, look forward to his remarks. Thank you so much, Deputy Administrator McCabe. It is fantastic that this is my, uh, I think it's my 14th day of work, and I get to come up here to this beautiful spot uh, with incredible people at this in, uh, amazing um, institution. Um, so thank you so much, uh, Senator Leahy, for welcoming us here to Burlington today. Thank you, Mayor, for having us. It's an, it's an honor to stand here with all of you to celebrate this historic investment in Lake Champlain. And EPA also thanks you for your steadfast support of the Lake Champlain Basin Program, and uh, which you've helped establish in 1990. So it's investments and our attention to this incredible resource have been going on decades and decades. Thank you, as has been noted to Dr. Phelan Fretz for hosting us here at the Echo Center and for your distinguished career here. I was a, uh, a science teacher in Western Massachusetts in the early 1990s, and man, what I would have given to have a resource like this <laughs> to bring my students to. Um, really remarkable what you've done here. And uh, when we were walking around before, the senator noticed the eyes as big as saucers <laughs> that the kids have who come here and uh, gasp at the sturgeon or gasp at someone who's dressed like a, a circus person juggling with circuits and electrons. I don't know what he was doing, but it looked really exciting. Um, 
And of course, thank you, uh, Deputy Administrator McCabe and Administrator Regan for, uh, for their leadership at EPA to realize the tremendous investment in water and wastewater infrastructure that she described all around the country. And that's an investment that will not only have returns in dollars, and of course it will, it will in dollars, but also in quality of life, in ecosystem health, sustainability, in equity, and in economic growth. And of course, thanks to our partners in Vermont and New York, uh, and thank you to Eric Howe and the Lake Champlain Basin Staff Program staff. We couldn't make progress without these partnerships uh, that, that Janet spoke about. Partnerships are the way we make these kinds of changes in our lives. And I'm so thrilled now to be part of such a robust team. Every day I hear about different teams that I'm on that I didn't know I was on. <laughs> it's awesome. This historic investment reflects all the work we still must do to restore and protect the lake. So often in environmental protection, we lack the resources to do what's necessary. And now, with your support uh, in Congress and the Biden-Harris administration, the bipartisan infrastructure legislation provides our team and all of us with significant federal resources to accelerate progress and to build back better on a basin level and on a local level. Our number one priority will be to support on the ground efforts, that's a term that I know the deputy administrator said as well. She's in Washington, I'm in Boston. We're often not on the ground. On the ground is here. Uh, on the ground is, is what you folks address and we're here to support that. Uh, we, our one, number one effort is to reduce phosphorus runoff from farms, impervious surfaces like roads and parking lots and from wastewater treatment plants and stormwater pipes. And as you know, excess phosphorus runoff feeds both invasive plant species, toxic algal, algal blooms, and adversely affect both human health and the enjoyment of the lake, as well as aquatic life. The total maximum daily load plan, when I talk with my colleagues at the office, we're always very hesitant to put in like regulatory ease. But if you think about it, of like, that's the maximum that the lake can stand of phosphorus. And, uh, you know, that's a bureaucrat ease. And by the way, I love bureaucrats. Uh, we work really hard to, to work with, uh, our, with our partners. And um, we have really uh, aggressive goals for phosphorus reductions in the states. And of course, I'd like to commend the state of Vermont for their work establishing strong regulatory f foundation as part of this partnership on which to build and execute the investments that we're, we're going to be making. And of course, there have been a lot of progress made, but there's still a long way to go to restore Lake Champlain. We all know that. We can celebrate the advances we've made, but we, we need to roll up our sleeves and keep on working, and that's what this bill is going to do. Uh, we need to reduce uh, phosphorus by about 34 percent, and that's exactly what this $40 million uh, that uh, Deputy Administrator McCabe talked about building infrastructure, investing with cities and towns, farming families, wastewater treatment managers, to make those investments that are necessary to reduce pollution and maintain a robust and sustainable and equitable economy. And $40 million is a lot of money. And the team will also be able to contribute to other important environmental projects that accelerate efforts to restore wetlands and other critical habitats. We can improve fish passage up the lake's many tributary rivers and streams, as well as control the introduction and spread of aquatic invasive species. We're thrilled to get to work with all of the partners discussed here today to make local community projects that get results for Lake Champlain a reality a reality that improves the everyday lives of people who depend on, who cherish, who plan for the future of this remarkable resource. You know, lakes like this, as the Deputy Administrator noted, all over the world and throughout human history have held special places in our psyches, in our myths, in our stories and histories, and in our spirituality. And it's an honor to be part of the sacred work of preserving such a treasure for the children who are out there today and who are you have all supported. So thank you very much. Now I have the honor of introducing Deputy Commissioner Kim Greenwood of the Department of Environmental Conservation here in Vermont. And since 2019, she has been on the forefront of the state's effort to streamline permitting, cutting red tape, while providing the kind of environmental protection that Vermont is well known for. And she brings experience from both the public and private sectors, exactly what is needed when addressing the kind of complicated challenges that we face here in Lake Champlain. Deputy Commissioner Greenwood.
Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. I'd like to start with echoing my sincere thanks to the senator and our colleagues at EPA, those that are here today and those that we work with every day collaboratively and really we couldn't do what we do without that relationship with them. So we are absolutely thrilled to be here. This is a moment of celebration for all of us. And if you've been working in the environmental field for a very long, you know there sometimes are not that many occasions to celebrate. So this is one I'm very grateful to be a part of today. This influx of federal funding for Vermont is for us a once in a lifetime, once in a generation, possibly once in an every, once in two generation opportunity for us, and we do not intend to miss that opportunity. We are excited about this work. We are daunted, and we are excited. I'm going to today talk about the um, kind of the places where we are going to focus on putting those funds, where where they're going, what they're going to do, and I'm very much looking forward to hearing the mayor's remarks about um, his plans for kind of fully executing those funds. We are anticipating at the Agency of Natural Resources over $400 million coming into our water infrastructure. That is an incredible opportunity. Our department, the Department of Environmental Conservation, is a subset of the Agency of Natural Resources. To give you a sense of perspective, our annual base operating budget is $120 million, and we are looking at $400 to $500 million coming in to help us help Vermonters. That is incredible, and we are very excited about that. We are going to focus in three primary, broad, pro programmatic areas for that funding. Water infrastructure, brownfields, and dam safety. For our drinking water alone has been mentioned. This is a, a massive investment for us. This funding increase represents a six-fold increase in our annual funding for clean drinking water, and that impacts every Vermonter in the state. As has been previously mentioned, it represents our largest investment ever in Vermont's drinking water and water infrastructure. It's an incredible opportunity for us. And when we talk about water infrastructure, what that means across the country can be different things. Here in Vermont, that means the water that is coming to and from our homes, bringing our, our water in, taking our wastewater out. It means the pipes that keep our parking lots from flooding even though that might not be obvious right now, and we have a lot of ice jams and uh, areas flooding, keeping those parking lots clean and keeping that water treated and obviously keeping ultim the ultimate source, our lakes and our rivers clean. It's a tremendous investment um, and it is, it is largely pipes, but it is more than pipes and it is a credible investment for us. It is not an exaggeration to say that water infrastructure in Vermont touches almost every facet of every Vermonter's life every day, even if they might not think about it. <laughs> the second area of broad programmatic support that we're going to be exercising with, the, with these influx of funds is around our brownfield sites. Brownfield sites are those sites where there are known or suspected hazardous waste contaminations, which obviously makes those sites difficult to develop and to occupy. The funding that we'll receive for this work is around $15 million, and that is gonna go directly to um, private developers and municipalities who are trying to redevelop these sites so that they can be reoccupied, which not only is a benefit to our environment, but also presents a tremendous um, environmental and economic development opportunity. Vermont has 5,000 approximate known or suspected of brownfield sites, which means that there is probably one in your town, and chances are pretty good. So this funding will, will go a long way into helping us address those. One of the most wonderful things about that is that once these sites are cleaned up, they are generally cleaned up forever, and that problem is taken off the table, and we can move on to solving other problems. Our third area of broad programmatic support is our dam safety program. Vermont has approximately 1,200 dams in Vermont. Many serve a useful purpose, but some are representative of a water-powered bygone era and pose hazards to the folks living downstream of those dams. For instance, if those dams, if we get a large storm, those dams fail, 
people living downstream can have their, their home, property, or even life impacted. The funding presented here in this opportunity is over a million dollars for us to take advantage and make sure that those resources are safe for people living downstream and could not come at a more opportune moment for us to invest in that. Our program is ready to invest in this and they are um, very eager to get going on this work. So in addition to those three broad programmatic areas, and I, I neglected to mention that those three areas, the funding will go directly into existing processes, which means that we don't need to get set up to set, figure out how are we gonna distribute this money, who's, how, who's gonna apply for it. We have those processes all set up, and that means quicker processes for all Vermonters, and we're very proud to be moving on that. In addition to those three sets of funding that are going into existing processes, we have three new additional sources of funding that are coming that we're also very excited about. The first is additional Brownfields money that was mentioned that um, will be awarded by EPA competitively across the region. The second is a, uh, a massive amount of funding to remove lead in our drinking water to the tune of $150 million. That is another example of a problem that once we remove those lead service lines, that problem disappears forever. And so it's an incredible opportunity and a rare opportunity in the environmental field to solve a problem once and for all. The third area is the removal of PFAS and other emerging contaminants from our drinking water. We are being awarded $40 million over five years to take these contaminants out of our drinking water and ensure that Vermonters are safe and that their drinking water is clean. And underlying all of this, of course, is our commitment and recognition that we have not fairly distributed our environmental burdens. We, ha we have inequitably distributed them. We are very much looking forward to our partners at EPA and in the communities to make sure that we are, we are having a more focused and honest conversation about our environmental burdens and bringing in our vulnerable, overburdened, and historically marginalized populations into that conversation. So this is obviously, as I mentioned several times, a lot of money for the agency, a lot of money for Vermont. And we are, we are so excited about this. Part of the reason that we're excited is because we've had a little, a little taste. I say a little taste. $40 million is not a little taste. It is a large taste of money coming in with the American Rescue Plan Act. We have been able to move to allocate two-thirds of that money already in eight months. So we have set up systems that will help us to facilitate the movement of this funds, these funds from the federal government through EPA and out to Vermonters in a way um, that, ha that we haven't done before. These systems are set up and ready to go. And we are eager and standing by and ready to, um, to move that money out. So to wrap up, um, this funding is obviously very transformational for Vermont. It gives us the opportunity to solve our environmental problems once and for all. It also gives us an opportunity to make investments into our maintenance and um, infrastructure in a way that will ensure that we won't be back here having these same conversations again about the same infrastructure for decades and possibly generations. It is setting us up for transformational change we are very, very proud to be working with our local communities, our contractors, planners, engineers, municipalities to be moving these funds and putting them on the ground and putting them to work. So on behalf of all Vermonters, I would like to thank the Senator, thank you Senator Leahy, and thank EPA and our colleagues about, um, for their support to getting us to this point. And I think it's time for us to get to work and we are ready to go. <laughs> I'd like to pass the podium along to, the, to Mayor Weinberger, and uh, I'm very excited to hear his remarks. <laughs> All right, well, good afternoon, everyone. Um, it's exciting to be part of this event. Thank you for the opportunity to, to be here with you. Um, and to our federal partners here, you're gonna, if you haven't already kind of grasped this about Vermont, one thing about Vermont is it's a very small place. Everybody knows everybody else. And um, uh, it's a little emotional being here today uh, with two individuals who've had a really significant impact on my life. Um, uh, Senator Patrick Leahy um, is someone I've known for 
since uh, personally known since 1991 when I served as an intern in uh, his Washington, D.C. office. And um, not quite as long. I've known Phelan a good chunk of that time since uh, moving back here to Burlington. I was born in Vermont as well, but uh, left for a while, moved back to the Burlington area. And, you know, Phelan must have met. I think the building wasn't yet open when we met for the first time. Um, and I uh, had the privilege, and I will just uh, just uh, take the, I don't know how many more times I'm going to get to speak publicly about uh, the work that I've gotten to enjoy with Phelan. So I am just going to tell two quick stories uh, uh, about the work with Phelan since uh, he's here, and it's an opportunity to, to recognize him in his remarkable career. Um, first story is about this this awning here, which is, uh, you know, since I've been sitting right here looking at it for the last 20 minutes, I can't help but remember as a new board member for, uh, uh, for the Echo Center, um, Phelan, uh, I, I kind of got involved in the, the building of this awning and the initial read from the city. Mind you, this is before the zoning administrator worked for me. The initial, and in fact, he was regulating many of my projects. He, uh, he, the, initially, the initial read from the city was this awning was not legal in the zoning. But, you know, developers get a bad name, but this, having a developer on the board can have some advantages. I, I looked at the zoning, and I thought I'd go back to him and uh, ask a couple more questions. And, and now the awning is here, and I don't think either of us quite envisioned. We knew it was going to be great for Echo, for events out here, and for uh, cultural events. We didn't know it was going to serve as such a great uh, federal security detail carport as it is right now, though. This is it's good to see you again. That you, more seriously, one thing that I am proud of and that I think shows what a great leader Phelan has been is um, uh, that he has never accepted that Echo would just be a uh, kids museum or just even be a science museum or even just be uh, a place that kind of held the importance of Lake Champlain and the basin. He's always um, understood the Echo uh, in a small city like Burlington had the potential to be more and needed to be more. And many years ago now, um, uh, many years before this long overdue reckoning on race, racial justice, racial equity in America began, uh, ECHO, um, under uh, uh, <clears throat> Phelan's leadership, um, really began to focus on diversity, equity, inclusion issues. And at one point came to the city and asked for the city's help in ensuring that um, every day on Martin Luther King Day that ECHO would be free and open to everyone in this community and that there'd be a full day of programming focused on racial equity and inclusion issues. And it's become, I, I believe it is now, the busiest day of the year every year. It's even busier than today. And um, the city's been proud to be a partner in that uh, with your leadership, Phelan. And let's, uh, let's, let's make sure that it, that, that kind of partnership continues uh, beyond your time here. I think it's uh, a sign of uh, one of your great accomplishments and a sign of uh, the vision you've had for this, uh, this agency. So thank you for your service, Phelan. Uh, it's also uh, kind of emotional to be here with uh, Senator Leahy. I th think this is the first time since uh, the Senator announced his retirement to you guys, leaving us here uh, on our own. It feels uh, lonelier with uh, knowing you guys uh, aren't going to be here that much longer. Um, uh, it is always uh, an honor to be with the Senator here on an event on the waterfront where the Senator has done so much for so long to make Burlington's waterfront one of the great places uh, in this country, really one of the great places in this world, and um, uh, that in, in, in such a significant and important economically, culturally, environmentally part of, of this state. And um, it is exciting to be here uh, as, and, and you know, I got to learn something in these presentations too about just how great of an impact uh, when fully implemented these infrastructure bills are, 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 going, uh, are going to have. Um, I want, let me just tell one, you know, we've heard a lot from everybody else. I, I won't, I'll try to just, I think I just really want us to tell one story, which I think, I hope captures why this is so important that the federal government is stepping up in this way. In 2018, we had a very bad summer here in, um, in Burlington. We had a number of things go wrong, break in our sewage treatment facilities, disinfection systems went wrong. We had a valve that got stuck and that poured um, many gallons, millions of gallons of, of untreated uh, or not fully treated sewage into the lake. And um, we, uh, we had bad weather as well, and that resulted in We still, although we've made great progress on this, people don't realize it, we've made enormous progress with respect to um, 
uh, unplanned releases, these, you know, these, uh, these overflow events, when storms hit, um, we had, that summer we had a particularly bad summer as well. So all this thing sort of culminated, it really was a, a crisis of sorts for the community. And we, as a result of that, um, accelerated plans that we had in place to reinvest in our wastewater and stormwater system. And we went to the voters that summer with um, one of the largest infrastructure packages in the city's history. And voters responded uh, in a really remarkable way. I, I don't, you know, outside of, you know, it's, I know it's not a day to make, speak light of anything happening, um, uh, you know, in, in, uh, in Russia, you know, outside of elections, uh, in, in, in go with governments like that, you don't hear about 92% of voters supporting anything. Um, Vermont, Burlington voters came forward, 92% of them supported that, that, those uh, investments in our stormwater and wastewater systems, and we're in the process of, of implementing them now, and they're, they're, we haven't had a summer like that since 2018, and we don't intend to have another one. Here's the thing, though. The, that $30 million of investment, which is a huge number for a community of 40 proud to say we're up to 45,000 in the latest census uh, people, it's, it's a lot of money. And we are reaching the limits. We have throughout my decade in office, we've had a real focus on infrastructure and we've gone to voters many times um, for overdue investments and in different aspects of our aging infrastructure. And they've always responded um, until this past fall. We actually lost, we had 57% of the voters supported a, a infrastructure package this past fall, but you need under our charter a two thirds vote, so it failed. Um, we have a smaller version out in front of voters right now. We have an election next Tuesday, believe it or not. Um, and uh, we've cut it back substantially, recognizing that I think we are really at the limits of what we can do um, uh, in a, such a time of such financial uncertainty um, with just local resources. Um, we've always had some, of course, assistance from, from the federal government, but to hear that this uh, assistance at a wholly, uh, you know, kind of order of magnitudes greater level is is incredibly welcome and needed news because that, that $30 million of investment I was talking about, all that did is help us fix old aging infrastructure that was broken and sort of modernize those systems. It did nothing uh, or very little towards the next round of investments we know we need to make to properly protect Lake, protect Lake Champlain from stormwater um, runoff. And so to know that there is going to be significant assistance as we um, you know, and we, we, we talk about TMDLs all the time here, too. I, 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 I think it's gone beyond the bureaucrats here in Burlington because Burlingtonians care a great deal about the lake. Um, I, I, to hear that we are going to have real financial assistance um, in meeting those goals is very welcome news. The city of Burlington will certainly be, continue to be a great partner to the state and the federal governments in implementing those systems, uh, I think, are... We, uh, it could be an exciting time for intergovernmental collaboration if we can get both the investment right as well as the policy details right to ensure that not only are we investing those dollars, but they're going into the, the areas where they have the greatest marginal impact. And, and you know, because it's, uh, I think Vermonters are, like Burlingtonians, are very much there on the importance of this. They want to see progress. And it's been what, what, too, too long without enough progress um, on this issue. Let's hope this confluence of uh, events, this once in a couple of generations opportunity means that we can deliver that progress to the, the people of Burlington and the people of Vermont and, and of this country. Thanks for the chance to be with you. Thank you all very much for your comments. Um, at this point, I think if Chris has any questions. Um, I know a number of the Senator staff are here, um, but uh, if you want to step in there. Maybe, Senator, if you want to step up to the podium, if there's any questions there, we'll, we'll take those. Otherwise, uh, thank you all for, for joining us today. I'll just open that. Sir. Question for Senator Leahy. Um, Russia launched an extensive invasion of Ukraine today. Uh, would you support the deployment of additional U.S. troops to Eastern Europe in the face of that invasion? Well, we are putting additional troops in uh, and material into uh, Eastern Europe to bolster our our um, allies there, not in not in Ukraine, but elsewhere. I think American people have to understand this is one of the greatest crises we've faced in decades. 
Um, I am glad to see that most Republicans and Democrats are coming together trying to support the very careful and measured steps President Biden has taken. I think it has sent a terrible, terrible signal to our allies around the world. The former president, Mr. Trump, has called the dictator, Vladimir Putin, a genius and saying he's doing the right thing. He's not doing the right thing. He's destabilizing Europe. He's going to cause untold deaths of innocent people. And we should be praying for the people in Ukraine. I've walked the streets of that capital. I've seen families with their children um, playing playgrounds, families walking to, and children walking to school. And to think that a dictator who has become a multi, multi, multi billionaire by stealing and by corruption and by empowering the people around him, somebody who has had those who have dared to stand up to him, either poisoned or jailed. You don't call him a genius. You call him what he is. This is a man who is so taken with himself and his failed ambitions that he's ready to disrupt the whole Western world. It is wrong. And we will, um, going back to Washington tonight, I'll be getting more briefings. I, I, I don't mean to get so wound up on this, but I'm the president pro tem of the Senate. I pay very closely to the fact that I'm third in line to the presidency, and I watch the reports I get, the reviews I get, the um, intelligence I get, and it's a very serious thing. I would urge people to look at what Senator Mark Warner one of the finest senators down there is the chair of the Intelligence Committee said in the news this morning, we may well face major uh, cyber attacks. Um, it's not just the troops, the tanks, the artillery on the border of Ukraine. It's those things that are on our border and right over here and right over there in cyber. So. Uh, You asked a valid question. As Marcel knows, I've been on the phone a lot the last couple of days, but uh, this is a very, very serious thing. And I contrast that with what we're seeing here today. And let me come back to this. Look at the wonderful people here who work, who dedicate themselves, not as Republicans or as Democrats, but as Americans, to making life better for Americans, for our children. Listen to the children playing out there. And think of the future they have. Think of those, what their parents hope for them. Think of what they can do for us and our whole state. That is what should be people's goals. Not to make oneself, instead of a hundred billionaire, a 200 billionaire, and a, and a dictator. This is wrong. The lives that are being shattered because of this man's ego is, um, it's hard to find times in history. Unfortunately, we have seen some very dark times. So I apologize for going on so long, but um, I'm the longest serving member of the U.S. Senate. I've seen crises over those years. I've been bolstered by my fellow Vermonters in both parties who have helped us get through those crises. Um, this one, both in reality and as, a, and as an existential crisis, is one of the worst things I've seen. So with that, with that good news, I, <laughs> I think, wait till you see what some of the sanctions are going to be coming tonight and tomorrow. The thing with the sanctions only work if our allies join us with them. And it's easy to say we're going to have sanctions but you, they only work if you have the allies with them. The extraordinary, extraordinary amount of time that has been spent by the president, the vice president, the 
Secretary of Defense, Secretary of State, our dedicated uh, women and men in our State Department in bringing together other countries. Two months ago, three months ago, I don't think you could have said we'd have the unity for sanctions we have now. But I know the, the weekends, the evenings, the phone calls the president has made. I know the personal appeal he's made to a lot of people that he knew before, even when he was in the Senate. And uh, I know the calls I've gotten from parliamentarians around the world, across the political spectrum, and the unity that we're seeing, that is the only way the sanctions work. You can put on more and more and more sanctions, and uh, but they only work if we have unity. And we have to understand, we are going to face threats too. That's what uh, Senator Warner was warning about on cyber threats, and uh, it is certainly something that we're seeing already. I won't go into the numbers, but you would be, well, it is frightening to see the increase in the number of attempts to get into our key um, cyber systems. Senator, should the U.S. be prepared to accept refugees as a result of this conflict? Yes. <laughs> uh, you know, in, uh, in Hungary, I, I remember when I was a young student at um, St. Michael's, an undergraduate student, and the number of refugees that were there as students because of the things that so the then Soviet Union was doing. And over the years, I've seen so many of them are now the, uh, the surgeon, the educator, the artist, the, the writer. And we were all stronger because of that. You know, my, um, the Leahy's came to Vermont in the 1850s because of the famines in Ireland. But the Italian side of my family came around 1900 because of what was happening in Italy at the time. They all added to this country. They all added to it. I became the first lady to get a college degree. My, my sister the second one. But then I've seen so many others. I'll tell you just one quick story. Um, that uh, Judge Sessions tells, the federal judge here. He would do, uh, every year, he would do uh, immigration swearing in. He started doing them on 9-11 after what happened in 9-11. But his most recent one, he was swearing them in and he wanted to tell them a story of the immigrants. He said he remembered swearing in an immigrant from another country and how proud he was to do that, proud to become an American. Judge Sessions then had a serious blood clot in his brain. He would have died, came close to die. He said when he woke up from surgery and uh, <clears throat> looked at the surgeon, he just saved his life. It was that same immigrant that he swore in. So if America ever stops closing our borders to immigrants, especially those fleeing oppression, then we're not the great country we should be. Thank you.